Victor's Morning Dawn Watchers, I'm Sis Joanna from Hawley Center. Today, we are now in 7th day of Dawn, of Dawn Watch. Our scripture is from the book of John, chapter 17, verse 20 to 24. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, and they may be one as we are one, I in them, and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you have sent me, and have loved them, even as you have loved me. Jesus did not only praise for his disciples, but he also prayed for you and me. When Jesus prayed for his disciples, he also prayed for the future believers that include us and the next generation. The unity of the Father, Son, and Spirit is being one purpose. They are one God, but different function. And our job is to declare the love of Jesus and provide a certain testimony that the world cannot deny. Allow me to share with you the three points will explain our reference tonight. Number one is unity or spiritual unity. In 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 13, just as a body, the one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ, for we all baptize by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentile, slave or free, and we are we're all given the one spirit to drink. We are united in spirit and truth. Unity requires perfections if only when we are united with Christ. There are hindrances in spiritual unity, such as divisions in the church. In 1 Corinthians 1.10 says, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agreed with one another in that you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. The reasons of divisions in family relationship, friend relationship, work, and even in church, are jealousy, boasting, quarreling, covetous, slandering, disrespect, pride, and immaturity. For these are the works of Satan. His job is to steal, kill, and destroy the unity. Sometimes we have to be bold and courageous to rebuke, correct, or confront our fellows with gentleness. For it is necessary and good to avoid conflicts and be united as one. Number two, same belief. One thing we have in common is that we have the same belief. We are in one church serving the Lord and praising the name of Jesus that He alone deserves. We share the same gospel and fellowship. The more we seek God, the more we obey Him, the more we will unify. And lastly, identical. In John 10, 30, I and the Father are one. Trinity, all of them have the same mind, will, and all-powerful. Likewise, whether you are Filipinos, Ghanians, Africans, Jews, Gentiles, slave or free, we are all identical, for we are children of God, and we are all saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. In conclusions, remember and may it give us comfort that the Lord Jesus pray for us, for you and me. And we must keep in our minds and heart that we have also responsibility to pray for the unbelievers, for them to repent and surrender to God, for our fellow believers to keep our faith in whatever circumstances we encounter and to strive to for spiritual unity. Let us all keep interceding for our churches, pastors, leaders, and workers 
to serve the Lord with love and unity. And verse 24, Father, I want those you have given me to, to be with where I am and to my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creations of the world. Jesus desires us to be with him in heaven to praise and give him glory he deserves. To God be the glory. God bless you all.